Good day everyone! Today I will be talking about flower arrangement. By the way, I am Ellen Marie R. Bebelone. You may call me Nina, and I'm a practicing architect here in Cagayan de Oro City. Before anything else, let me give you an overview of the subtopics that we will be discussing under flower arrangement. So first, we will be defining terms. Second, the things needed for flower arrangement. Third, the forms of flower arrangement. Fourth, the historical development of flower arrangement. The styles of flower arrangement based on shapes. And then next, we have the styles of flower arrangement based on moods. And then lastly, the basic tutorial for florist beginners. Now, what is a flower? This is also known as a blossom or a bloom. And it contains the plant's reproductive organs. So basically, its technical function is to reproduce. But how about its other function? A flower is also a harbinger of joy. So when we say harbinger, it brings joy to the one who sees it or it sparks joy to the one who receives it. An example will be this photo of Miss Hart Evangelista in which she received a huge bouquet of flowers last Valentine's Day, which was also her birthday. As you can see in the photo, her eyes were sparkling. She has a very big smile. That means she was really very happy with what she received, right? And another one here is another example of how flowers spark joy. This is the cute little baby girl, Dahlia Amelie, with her floral backdrop. Her mother, Ann Curtis, made a floral number 10 for her 10th month birthday celebration. So as you can see, flowers really spark joy and add happiness to the celebration, right? Previously, we have talked about the flower in general, but how about flower arrangement? What is flower arrangement? It is the art of designing, organizing, and grouping living or dried plant material for the adornment of the body or home or as a part of public ceremonies, festivals, and religious rituals. So basically, it entails designing and design per se. Example, when you place flowers into containers without the thought of design or without the thought of designing it, they remain as just a bunch of flowers. Although, I mean, they're beautiful in themselves, but they do not make up a certain arrangement. Now, what are the things needed for flower arrangement? First is we need the mechanics, second, the equipment, third, the containers, fourth, the basis, fifth, support, sixth, plant material, seventh, the accessories. So first is the mechanics. These are items used to keep flowers, foliage, and stems in place within the container. Examples of these are floral foam, pin holders, chicken wire, also called as wire mesh, and the prong. So first example is the floral foam. This is also called as the oasis, basically because it may provide water to the flower. This material made of cellular plastic is available in two types. The green one, which is this, and then the brown or the gray one, which is this. In order for the floral foam to serve its function, you have to soak it first under the water. This photo shows two foams which were cut sectionally. As you can see, the one on the left is the correctly soaked foam, while the one on the right is the incorrectly soaked foam. So as you can see in the photo, this one is fully submerged under the water because all of the parts were colored dark. Then this one, which is uh, 
partially only partially soak onto the water so the correct one is this as advised by florist because this one is more effective into retaining water for the flowers in an arrangement next is we have the pin holders this is also called the kenzan or the needle point holders as you can see the pins are sharply pointed thus holding heavy stems more securely next is the chicken wire i guess because it's supposedly used for chicken fences but here especially in large displays it is used to cover floral foam blocks so we put the floral foam first then this so it can hold larger amounts of flowers better together so this one is the simplest type of floral foam anchor this is called the prong so when we say anchor it means this is the only one holding the floral foam onto the container because when it is just the floral foam alone it will be unstable or will easily fall off from the container in order to use this you will also need a glue and a floral tape or a floral tape you put some glue onto the prong surface then put it onto the container then insert the foam in it the second thing needed for the flower arrangement are the equipment these include tools used to ensure that the satisfactory arrangement of plant material is created within the container examples of which are the mister the secateurs the cocktail sticks cut flower preservatives bucket scissors knife watering can wire cutter floral tape and then the wire first example we have here is the mister in flower arrangement mister does not mean spouse or man it is the spray bottle that we see being held by a certified plantito or plantita it's called mister because once you push the spray button a fine mist of water droplets is being emitted to keep an arrangement look fresh especially in warm weather second example we have here are the secateurs these are used to cut thick woody stems the next example is the toothpick or the cocktail sticks these are used to make holes in florist foam for a soft stem of a flower the fourth example are cut flower preservatives it is a bactericide available in powder or in liquid form to prevent slime and smell from developing in the vase water to prolong the life of fresh flowers this could also be made at home by adding three teaspoons of sugar and one drop of bleach to half a liter of water another example is the bucket these are used to contain flowers ready for arranging we usually see this in flower shops next is we have the classic scissors basically these are used to cut the thinner stems of flowers because previously the secateurs are used to cut the thicker stems of the flowers next we have the knife the one used in flower arrangement is shaped like a swiss knife i guess for convenience and better grip next is every florist and certified plantito and plantita have this <laughs> this is a watering can used to water plants and flowers next we have the wire it is specially used in garlands and wreaths to hold flowers together and as you can see like the wires used in construction it also has gauges to represent thickness the higher the number the thinner the wire the lower the number the thicker the wire next one we have here is the wire cutter this is basically used to cut the wire next 
So the next example under the equipment is the floral tape. This one is used to stick the flowers together or it could also be used into the prong by sticking the prong onto the surface of the container and then putting the floral foam onto the prong. So now we will be discussing the third thing which is one of the most important needs in flower arranging and these are the containers. From the word alone, these are used to contain the flowers or the plant material. They may or may not be hidden by the flowers or the plant material. In the photo here, we can see bases of different colors. These are one of the examples of containers being used in flower arranging. Next example of containers are the baskets. They imply a more rustic feel compared to vases. Next, we have metal or wooden containers formed into letters or numbers. Like the one I showed you earlier, the photo of Miss Dahlia Amelie's 10th month birthday celebration. These are also used to contain flowers or any plant material like succulents, as you can see in the photo, and roses, succulents and roses. The fourth thing needed for flower arrangement are the bases. What are these? These are objects that are placed underneath the container to protect the surface of the support or to add beauty of the display. Examples of which are table mat, tree section, wood base, stone base, and oriental base. In, in this photo here, we have a wooden base or a tree section supporting the vase, the flower vase. The fifth thing needed for flower arrangement is the support. So from the word alone, it is a structure which is used to support the container. Examples of which are tables, sideboards, alcoves, and shelves. So next is we have the plant materials. Plant materials can be divided into three basic types. First, we have the flowers, which are the dominant focal point material, the fillers, the secondary material, and the foliages, the line material. We have the flowers. Since this is the dominant material, it should provide a focal point or a center of interest to the one who sees it. Thus, it consists of bold flowers or clusters of small showy blossoms. Examples of these are gerbera. Here we have a gerbera flower, the chrysanthemum, tulips, roses, and then the uh, lilies. So next is the fillers. So basically, their function is to fill in the blank spaces in a flower arrangement. Fillers consist of smaller flowers and all sorts of leaves that are used to cover the mechanics and the edges of the container. This is an example of a filler. We always see this in many flower arrangements. This is what we call the baby's breath. The third type of plant material is the foliage. It consists of tall stems, flowering spikes, or bold leaves that are used to create the basic framework or skeleton of the flower arrangement. Examples of this type are palm leaves, which we can see in this photo on the left, and asparagus ferns, which we see on the right. So as we can observe, a flower arrangement usually have these three types of plant material. The three F's. First, we have the flowers, next the fillers, and then lastly, the foliage. Another thing we need in flower arrangement, which are not plant materials, are the accessories. These are actually just optional, meaning these are just to add extra interest or stretch the amount of flowers when they are in short supply. Examples of these are ribbons, candles, stuffed toys, or even pebbles. Now we go to the forms of flower arrangement. 
These are the three basic forms of how flowers are being arranged. One is in containers. Flowers could also be woven into garlands and wreaths, and flowers could also be worn or carried through a nosegay, a bouquet, sprays, or a corsage. These are examples of flowers arranged in containers. Containers, as what we've discussed earlier, could be in the form of a basket, a vase, a metal or wooden letter or number. This is actually the most common among all, one that we can apply and put in the interiors of houses, offices, or commercial buildings. Next form, we have the garlands and the rets. What is the difference between the two? A garland compared to a wreath is more flexible and could be shaped into different forms, maybe a line or even curves. We usually see this type of flower arrangement during weddings and birthday celebrations. While a wreath is more rigid and fixed, it is usually shaped into a circle and hung onto a door. We usually see this during Christmas hung onto house doors. So this one here is an example of a garland laid onto a table in a wedding ceremony. And this one here is a wreath of which the theme is on Christmas. So it is hung onto a door during Christmas. Flowers could also be just worn or carried for personal adornment. Here we have a nosegay. As you can see in this photo, it is a small bunch of mixed flowers, typically one that is sweet-scented, and we usually see this being held by bridesmaids during weddings. But why is it called nosegay? The term nosegay arose in the 15th century Middle English, of which gay means ornament and nose means to appeal to the nose. So way back, wearing the nosegay is a form of fashion. The more fragrant the flowers of the nosegay you are wearing, the more fashionable you will be. It was also stated in the essay on nosegays, which was published in the fashionable magazine on September 1786, that the larger the flowers are in the nosegay, the more girlish and youthful a wearer appears. So holding or carrying the nosegay during weddings was initiated by French and Italian ladies way back in the 18th century. The new married lady appears in public with a bouquet de mary, as what they call it, or the wedding nosegay. So these are photos of ladies or women carrying nosegays in the 18th century. So if we compare the nosegay to a bouquet, their difference is that a bouquet has a stiff backing to give it shape and support while a nosegay are just a bunch of flowers and stems that are wrapped tightly in ribbon or lace. So we have sprays as a form of flower arrangement also. As what we've mentioned in the definitions, flower arrangement could also be used to commemorate the dead. Sprays in flower arrangement are the large flat bouquets that are placed on caskets or tombs. Like in this picture on the right, we have sprays on gray coffins. So lastly, the smallest and the simplest form of flower arrangement is the corsage. It is worn around a wrist, especially during proms, formal events, and weddings. Now we move to the historical development of flower arrangement. Actually, there are many periods of which flower arrangement develop, but I think it will consume too much of our time if we cover every period. So I just chose four periods of which I think is interesting. So these are the periods, ancient Egypt, which was in 2800 to 20 BC, the Greeks and Romans, 600 BC to 325 AD, the China and Japan, 207 BC, and now the modern times, flowers for interior decoration. So now we start with the ancient Egypt. Since they were one of the first civilizations to emerge in the world, 
Egyptians were known as the first florists. At that time, celebrations and gatherings by the royal classes were very important and prominent. And as we can see here in this photo, flowers, most especially the lotus blossoms, were carried by these women during celebrations to display luxury as them being part of the royal class. So this one is a closer look of the lotus blossom. Lotus blossom is actually considered as sacred by the Egyptians. Why? Well, as you can see in this photo of the lotus bloom, the white petals stands for the rays of the sun and the yellow center stands for the sun. Primarily, it looks like a sun. So it signifies the Egyptians' sun god which is Ra. So this is Ra, their sun god, whom they largely worship in the Heliopolis, which was the cult place in ancient Egypt. Characteristics of Egyptian floral design include order, simplicity, and repetition of a particular pattern. And as you can see in this photo, there is no bunching or overlapping from flower to flower. So it's really organized to look at and very simple no now let us proceed to the greeks and the romans in this period the ancient olympic games took place and at this time the garland the wreath and the cornucopia were used as rewards to those who won the olympic games in these photos are laurel leaves an olympian wears this as a wreath on top of his head during or after a game. So this one here is the cornucopia, which is also called the Horn of Plenty and is associated with the goddess of fortune, Fortuna. Fruits, aside from flowers, are also being placed in this cornucopia. It is also within the Greek and Roman period wherein the Day of Rose Adornment, also known as Dies Rosationi, is being practiced. It is a tradition in which they commemorated the dead by placing flowers at burial sites, a practice we still continue today by using sprays, no? as what we have discussed earlier. This is a photo of the Dies Rosationi. Now, we shall go to China and Japan in 207 BC. At this time, during the Han period, flowers were used in medicine and religious teachings. One of the most important flowers of the Chinese was the Mudanwa, or the Peony. For them, it is the king of flowers and symbolizes good fortune and high status. So they use the peony as a woman's herb, which regulates the female hormonal cycle, alleviated headaches, and stomach pains. At that time, Chinese flower arrangement consists of linear and calligraphic designs. So examples are these photos. As you can see, flowers are used in their calligraphy, even in their paintings. So next, we have the Japanese floral design, or greatly known as the Ikebana. What does Ikebana mean? Ike means arrange and bana means flower. Thus, in English, it is arranging flowers. Compared to other periods and people, the Japanese treat this practice as a spiritual process that helps one develop a closeness with nature and merge the indoors and the outdoors. So this is an example of an ikebana, as well as this. So as we can see in the previous ikebana photos, principles that are so visible are balance first, second is the graceful lines, and then third is minimalism. Japanese value negative space so much because uh, for them, negative space signifies silence and an emptiness full of possibilities. So Ikenobo is their oldest known school of the Ikebana. 
and it began in the Rukakudo Temple in Kyoto, where the Ikinobo family had long been head priests. And the traditional styles of the Ikebana consist of only two, the Rika and then the Nagire. So in Rika, it is like a miniature of a natural landscape. So as you can see in the photos, the flower arrangement represents a natural landscape. So like this one, we see a bonsai tree representing an actual tree as part of the flower arrangement, right? So on the other hand, Nagere is much more of a carefree arrangement compared to Rika. But in Nagere, flowers needed to be placed and supported by tall vases. So here is an example of a Nagere arrangement. As you can see, a tall vase was used to support the flowers. No? And then, in the late 19th century Japan, Western culture was introduced. Thus, Western flowers were also made known to the Japanese. This was also the time in which another school, the Ohara, was created and started the Moribana style. Moribana means piling up of flowers. It also emphasizes uneven or what we call as the odd numbers. This style also became the most popular among all Japanese styles of the Ikebana. There are two common Moribana styles. We have the upright and the slanting. This is an example of the upright style. So from the name itself, the plant material was placed in an upright position. For this one is the slanting style in which the plant material is placed in a diagonal or slanting manner. This one is also another example of the slanting style. Now these are the things needed for a Moribana style arrangement. First, we need shallow containers or the utsuwa. Next, we have the kensan or the floral frogs. Then the three main types of flowers and the branches. The longest is the shin, which represents heaven, followed by the so, which represents man. Then the shortest is the tai, which represents earth. So these elements should be present in a more bana style arrangement. The otsuwa, kenzan, and then the three types of flowers. So this is a photo of the otsuwa and the kenzan. So the otsuwa here is the one containing the kenzan. This is the container beneath the kenzan. So the kenzan is the sharply pointed pins. And then this is the closer look of the kenzan as what we've discussed earlier. So this is a photo showing the length of materials in the Moribana style. By the way, I was quite amazed that even the heights of the plant materials have equations. Like in this photo, mathematical equations, as you can see, were shown to solve the heights of the shin, so, and tai based from the width and height of the Yutsuwa. But just to simply put, let's remember that the tallest among all is the shin, followed by the so, and then lastly, the shortest is the tai. The placing of the plant material in the Moribana, Ikebana style also has varying degree of angles. The nearest angle to the y-axis is the shin, followed by the so, and then lastly, the tie. So this photo is the angle guide for the placement of plant materials in the Moribana, Ikebana style. Now, I will briefly show you common flowers used in Ikebana. First, we have the tallest flowers or the shin. So examples of these flowers are the peach blossom, flowering plum, and then the flowering dogwood. Next, we have the medium height flowers or the so, examples of which are the thistle, the dahlia, and the peony. And then lastly, we have the shortest height of plant material or the tie. 
examples of which are the Misty Blue, the Baby's Breath, and the Great Brunette. Now, we finally go on to the modern times, of which flowers are often used as decors in the interiors of residential and hospitality projects. So this is an example of a living area without a floral decor. And this is its look after putting open shelves with floral decor. So as you can see, the flowers used here are the hydrangea, the phalaenopsis, which give the space a fresher look. Next, we have a dining area without any floral decor. This is its look with a floral decor in it. So as you can see, a bromeliad is put onto the center of the table, so it gives a more tropical vibe into the space. Now we're down to the styles of floral arrangement based on shapes. This will really be quick since I will just be flashing photos. First, we have the fan-shaped flower arrangement. As you can see from the word itself, it is shaped like a fan. So next, we have the vertical flower arrangement, which is basically shaped in a linear manner vertically. Next, we have the opposite, the horizontal flower arrangement which is basically shaped in a linear manner but horizontally. Next is the crescent flower arrangement. As you can see from the word itself, it has drawn its inspiration from the moon, so crescent. Last style, based on shape, we have the S-shaped flower arrangement. And as you can see, it is shaped like the letter S. Now we go to the styles of flower arrangements based on moods. First, we have the corporate. This is ideally found in offices, like the center of a conference table. Flowers used in this style are more likely neutral in color to exude a more corporate and formal feel. So next, we have the dark style for darker moods and designs. Next is the feminine style which makes use of pastel and bright colored flowers to exude a soft feminine feel. The next style is the romantic style. So if you'd like to surprise your loved one with a romantic dinner, so it will be nice if you will use this style. So this style looks perfect with intimate candle lights and laces. So as you can see in the photo, candles are also used. No? So this is another example of the romantic style. Next is we have the minimalist style of flower arrangement. So this is a closer style to the famous Ikebana. In this style, negative space is also valued. Usually, one flower type or color is being used together with water, pebbles, or a monochromatic base. So the next is the tropical style. So this style is very common to be displayed in the interiors of beach resorts, for example. So this style makes use of tropical plant materials like palm leaves, anthurium, bromeliad, orchid, and the likes. So these are examples of the tropical style flower arrangement. So as you can see here in these photos, palm leaves are being used orchids, anthuriums, and other tropical plants are being used in these flower arrangements. Lastly, we have the rustic or the boho style of flower arrangement. So unlike the styles we have previously discussed, this one makes use of dried plants rather than freshly cut plant materials. So aside from the rustic and bohemian feel that it gives, dried flowers are also beneficial since first, it has low maintenance. You don't have to water it or give it sunlight every now and then since it's already dead. 
Next, it gives a fresh outdoor feel. And then lastly, it's easy to decorate. Like you don't need to put dried flowers onto a floral foam. So the lesser materials, the easier to decorate. So this is an example of a before photo without dried plants or flowers. So this one is an after look with the dried flower decors. So as you can see, it has a more outdoor vibe compared with the one without the dried plants or flowers. And now we're finally down to the last subtopic, which is a basic tutorial for florist beginners. First, place the flowers in the center of the arrangement for focal emphasis. Fill in the extra spaces with foliage. The smaller flowers can be placed around its perimeter. And then remember to use floral foam to supply water at the bottom and to keep flowers in place. And if you can, you add flower preserve to keep your arrangement healthy for a longer period of time. So we have already discussed the toolkits, so now let's just have a brief look at how a rose, for example, is being prepared for a flower arrangement. So first, remove the thorns by using a sharp knife or clippers. Next, remove any excess leaves and then cut the stems at a 45 degree angle. Now we take a look at the simple flower basket here in the Philippines. So in the said basket, the gerbera flowers cost about 300 pesos. So its leaves cost about 25 pesos, its basket cost about 50 pesos, and the floral foam cost about 25 pesos. Thus, the total cost of 400 pesos. So presuming let's add 20% of 400 pesos, so we have 480 pesos as the capital cost. So let's add another, say for example, 50% markup and 12% back. So we now have 806 pesos as the suggested price per basket of a gerbera flower basket. So just in case, if you guys want to pursue a mini flower business, we now have some ideas, right? So that ends my report. Here are the references. Thank you so much for listening and I do hope you guys have learned something.